it's a great joy to be with you again today. Yes. We thank you for the faithfulness unto the Lord in watching this program, subscribing and sharing with others. If you've not subscribed, click the button and share with others. Today, the Lord is asking us to share with you a very interesting topic. Go get your own oil. Go get your own oil. It's a command. It's, it's an advice. Uh, and by the time my wife shares with you, you will know the urgency of why you need to go get your own oil. We live in a time when everybody thinks uh, they've been talking about the coming of the Lord and nothing is happening. We live in a time where Christians are relaxed and uh, you know focused on different things here and there, not even remembering the primary purpose of why we are here. We are here, we are passing through. Yes, we have dominion and overcome, but we are going into a place where we will reign and rule with Christ and come back and have dominion over this. But before that happens, we need to live in a state of preparedness. Mm -hmm. My wife, yes. go get your own oil is a wake-up call for all of us as believers yes. to live our life ready anytime the bridegroom would come. Yes. So uh, my wife would read the text and then go on to share the message for today. Thank you, my Lord. Welcome again, brethren. Indeed, the message for today is a clear on call to everyone who is a believer. Amen. Go get your own oil. This is a, a phrase, a, 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 an advice that was given by the wise virgins to the foolish virgins. I'm sure a lot of us already know this story. But don't run off with your knowledge of the story. Mm -hmm. Let's pay close attention to what the clearing call is for this moment. It is a story about the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Mm -hmm. Especially as it draws to a close, towards the end of age. Amen. So the text is Matthew 25 verses 1 to 13. When the end comes, I'm reading from God's word translation. When the end comes, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids. They took their oil lamps and went to meet the groom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish brides took their lamps, but they didn't take any extra oil. The wise brides, however, took along extra oil for their lamps. Since the groom was late, all the bridesmaids became drowsy and fell asleep. All, all the bridesmaids became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, someone shouted, Amen. The groom is here. Come to meet him. Then all the bridesmaids woke up and got their lamps ready. The foolish one said to the wise ones, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. But the wise bridesmaids replied, We can't do that. There would be enough for both us and you. Go find someone to sell you some oil. While they, that is the foolish virgins now, the foolish bridesmaids, while they were buying oil, the groom arrived. The bridesmaids who were ready went with him into the wedding hall, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids arrived and said, Sir, sir, open the door for us. But he answered them, I don't even know who you are. So stay awake because you don't know the day 
of the hour. Brethren, this is a clear room call. The Spirit of the Lord is saying, Be awake. Be awake. Go get your own oil. Let's quickly look at the passage and pick out a few things before we move forward. Starting from verse 1, it says, This is about the kingdom of heaven, and it's a story about the ten bridesmaids. There were the foolish ones and the wise ones. There was something that distinguished them from one another. They didn't take any extra oil. Those were the foolish ones. So they all had lamps that had oil in it that was actually burning. It wasn't that they didn't have oil at all. When they arrived, they had lamps and they had oil in it. But some Thing had prompted the wise ones before they came in, before they arrived, to say, get extra oil for this journey. Hmm. The wise maids took along their extra oil, and we soon learned in the passage that the groom was late. Hmm. The groom was late. And what happened? All oh, the bridesmaid became drowsy and fell asleep. Paraventure, you had read the story and it seemed as if it was only the foolish ones that slept. But let's pay attention that all the bridesmaids slept. There is the fact that we all need to be awake and alert. The word of God says, let him that think he stands, take heed lest he falls. Let him that thinks he's up and doing, take heed lest he falls. Now, it says that while they slept, someone came around and said, the groom is here. I want us to note here that by the time this clearon call, because this is the clearon call, the groom is here. It came at a time when they were all sleeping. As a saint and as a child of God, at this time as you are listening, if you review and look over your life, are you actually awake? Are you over? Uh, are you occupying? as he has commanded till he comes. Are you standing in your place or you are relaxed because others have oil in their lamps and you can see by their own light. It's not going to be dark anyway. So pastor will pray for me. People are praying for me. I can run to the prophet to say, prophet, what do you see? How can I do this? How can I do that? But there was this clarion call that came as this message is going out. It says the groom is here. The thing to note here is that between this time that this message was given by this person who announced that the groom was here, there was a time lag before the groom actually arrived because we were told later in the passage that the groom arrived. So there was a time between this two events. Now, as the, um, when this person came, all the bridesmaids heard. They had that voice that said, the groom is here. And they got up and the ones that were ready with extra oil had nothing to fear. They were alerted. They, they, they arose and they were ready. The others, the ones that were foolish, they were also, they also had, but they were not ready. Why? Because they did not have the extra oil. So then, the, they asked the wise ones, what do, can we get oil from you? And we have read this, so I'm going to move on. So they, they had to go get their own oil. And it was while they were getting their own oil, 
This scripture tells us while they were buying oil, the groom arrived. Note that this oil was not free. It needed to be purchased. The oil, unlike salvation, was not free. Salvation is by grace. And our Christian life is by grace, granted. But we should not miss out on the fact that there is work that needs to be done. Isaiah 40 tells us, My work is before me, and my reward is with me. It's not all, let's go happy, lucky, you know. It is about listening to what the Spirit will tell us and walking in the Spirit. The oil needs to be purchased because we are told they were buying it. It costs something. The cost to a child of God could be the determination to create time to pray, to study the word, that is not just read it, search the scriptures like the Berean, and understand the scriptures. As in Zechariah chapter 3, the word of God is this oil. Hallelujah. Oil, however, exists in different grades. We know that. Even if we would use the gas oil, we have the diesel, the premium oil, and the regular oil. So oil comes in different grades and it needs to be purchased. The word of God is the oil. How you study the word and search it, how you listen to it, how you re respond to it, all determines the grade of oil that you are purchasing. The activated oil inside a burning lamp, that is, when you put oil in the, in the lamp, you know the lamp of the old days, you need to activate it by putting some fire to the wick, and then that wick begins to burn, and then the light comes through the shades of the lamp, and then you can see. That is an activated oil. Now, we say the word of God is that oil. The activated oil inside that burning lamp is likened to the realm word of God. That is, it's likened to that word that you have searched, that you have studied, that you have received, that you have marinated, that you have prayed upon, that you have fasted upon, that you have received the revelation light of it, and now you speak. That is the rhema word. The word that God has spoken, you had the voice of God leap off from those pages of the scriptures, speaking directly to you. That is the rhema word. This is purchasing and activating that word, which is the oil. And the logos, of course, are the words that are in the Bible, in the scriptures. Explaining further, the logos word is the raw material, that is, that's the raw material that we ingest. We read it, we study it as we have said, and then we activate it in our hearts to enable us to walk in faith, to harness and manifest God's plans and miracles on earth. Amen. How do you activate the Logos word in your heart? Some of you might ask. In Luke 21, 36 to 38, in God's word translation, it says, Be alert at all times. Pray so that you have power to escape everything that is about to happen and to stand in front of the Son of Man. That's 36. And here we see Jesus telling his disciples, that the, the, the solution, the, 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 uh, the way to activate the word of God in our lives is for us to pray, pray on the word of God, pray, pray on that word that comes alive to you, jumps at you in the scriptures, pray on it to hear God's voice speaking to you. As you read, you want to hear, and as you hear, you will see, amen. And then you will be escaped through the be able to escape through the power that comes in this world. And Jesus demonstrated this to his disciples by living his life to show that during the day he will teach in the temple, and at night in the night he will go to the Mount of Olives and spend the night there. He would spend the night on the Mount of Olives. 
doing what he was praying to do. And in the morning, you will see results because all the people will come from everywhere to listen to him. Matthew 26 verse 41 also says, the Lord speaking to his disciples, he says, stay awake and pray that you won't be tempted. You want to do what's right, but you are weak. The Bible says the day comes and we should be awake and, and alert because if not for the grace of God, even the very elect will be deceived. Notice that all of the bridesmaids slept. They were wearied because the bridegroom appeared to be late. Hmm. There will be distractions. There will be temptations. There will be things that will try to lure away from the right path. But then we need to stay awake. This is why two people will read the same Logos word, talking about activation of the oil, of the word of God. Two people will read the scriptures, which is the Logos word, but one will get a revelation light of the insight into the world, and then it becomes Rema. And they will manifest miracles by confessing it and acting by it. But the next fellow can't. Why? Because it is only Logos. They are just speaking, reading like they are reading any book. There is not yet the power of God's spirit on or his breath on that word. You have to pray that to happen. You have to search and put it in your heart for that to happen. Our prayer should then be that, oh Lord, let your breath, your breath of life come on every word of yours that you send my way. David said in Psalm 119 and verses 129 to 130, by now we would know that this is one of our favorite scriptures. Amen. Amen. He said, your marvelous words are miracles. Yes, those words in the Bible, they are, they living, are living miracles. Thank you, my Lord. They are living miracles. They are alive. But they need to be activated for you to see the manifestations of them. Amen. David said, no wonder I long to obey everything you say. Because he wants to, he wants to experience the wonders of Jesus, of, 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 of our Lord. He says, break open your word within me. So I'm going to read it. I'm not going to leave it in my head. I'm going to put it in my heart. Break open your word within me until revelation light shines out. Those with open hearts are given insight into your plans. So those who will take their time to do the extra thing, to go the extra mile, they will be given insight into your plans. Amen. Yongi Cho of Blessed Memory said, The written word, which is the Logos word, is like raw rice. While the Rema word is cooked rice. Amen. I'll say that again. The written word, which is the Logos word, the word we read in the scriptures, is like raw rice. It's like God supplying us the produce that we need to enable us to live, to give us strength, energy, and to keep us alert and awake. That's the word. The scripture is like raw rice. While the Rema word is the cooked rice. So we need to take the raw rice, put it in the pot, put water in it, put fire under it, and cook it for some time before it gets cooked enough for us to be able to eat it. So also the scriptures, it is not putting the Bible on our dashboard or putting it under our pillow or putting it on our bedside or on a table in our office that makes us the Christian or even waking up just to glance through it and read it so we can say check our bread. No, it is searching it, studying it, putting it in our hearts like David said, breaking it open. Praying, fasting, saying, what does this mean? How does this apply to me? Lord, speak to me. That's when it becomes cooked rice. Then you can eat and enjoy and get energy. That's when you speak that word and then it manifests to the glory of God and for you to also live your life. May I quickly add, it's yes, not sir. enough to just have 
all the translations of the Bible in your phone, in your iPad, mm. uh, because even though we don't carry the Bible physically about now, some carry it electronically. Yes. Because it's not just to stay there, mm. it's for you to study, mm. meditate on it, cook it, and let it be become life in you. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Mm. Amen. God provides our raw materials, as my husband has said, but we need to study, we need to pray, we need to fast. We need to receive the revelation light, as the man of God has said, and we will speak it into glorious manifestation. Note that not all the disciples walked on water. The day Peter asked the Lord if he could come, but they were all in the same boat. Not all the disciples had the revelation. Hallelujah. They both had the word. They both saw the Lord and they both had when Jesus told Peter. But when Peter asked, Can I come? And he said, Come. They all had, they were all there. But they were Peter all there. Was the one that had the rema and walked on the water. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That is that gives us a light on what we are talking about. We can all be in the same church. Go for the same service, be in the same congregation, boast that this is my pastor, is the best pastor. But who are you? Just like the Lord asked those ones who said, Lord, let us come in. He said, but who are you? I don't know you. So it is not because we are a member of that congregation. On that day, it will be pastor so, 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 and his congregation come along. No, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be pastor, he will stand on his own. Wife, she will stand on her own. Congregation, one by one, everyone will stand on their own. Hallelujah. So then, Peter caught the revelation and only he walked on water. You cannot keep seeing through the light rays from another's lamp. Each person is required to look in the mirror and behold God's image and be changed into the same image that they see each one. We need to have the eyes of our understanding enlightened. Like that person said, the groom is here. There is like an urgency in the spirit. There is a quickening in the spirit right now that the groom is here. He may not be here right now because we have not had the trumpet call, but in his mercy, he sent out someone to go and tell them that he was there. So this is a clear on call. Go get your oil. Learn to stand on your own. Have a relationship with God. Don't just be a part of the congregation. That is great. But what is your relationship with God like? Do you really have that life connection between you and God? Do you hear his voice and are you connected with him by the Spirit? Because the Spirit is the seal unto the last day. The Spirit is he that guides us in the way in which we should go. It was the Holy Spirit that prompted the wise virgins to get the extra oil. That was the missing link. It is not just being baptized in the Spirit. It is being led by the impulses of the Holy Spirit being led by every instruction. If he says, take right, take right. If he says, keep going straight, keep going straight. Even if everybody is going left, for you, if he tells you straight, it's straight because that is your path and you won't miss it. So, we should learn to use our own oil and have our own light from our own lamps. We need to have the eyes of our understanding enlightened. The seven sons of Sceva tried using the identities of Jesus Christ and Paul to cast out demons in a man. And as is written in Acts 19 verses 15 to 16, but they, the seven of them, were badly beaten and bruised by this one demonized person. In conclusion, brethren, expand the space of your tent, as written in Isaiah 54, verses 2 to 4. It says, expand the space of your tent. Stretch out the curtains of your tent. 
Don't hold back. This is not the time to hold back. Go all out for God. Lengthen your ropes. Go all out for God. Lengthen your ropes. And drive the in the tent pegs. Make sure you are standing strong. Make sure your house that you are building is really on a solid foundation. Reappraise yourself. It is the time to quickly reappraise before that bridegroom that has been announced to be here would actually arrive. Brethren, the bridegroom is here. Go get your own oil. Get it now. Get extra oil, says the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And we would like to pray with you as you have this message. Whatsoever is distracting you, whatsoever is making you to have a lackadaisical attitude to the things of the Lord, the time is now. The time is now. It's nearer than when we first believed. Amen. Father, we thank you for this very call. We thank you for this message that all our hearers, they will know that yes, you are ready. And any time from now, the trumpet can start. And so, Father, we pray that in the mighty name of Jesus, all the hearers will not be like those five foolish virgins who did not have enough oil, but will live daily by your word. will be ready at the trumpet at the moment you arrive and be able to go with you in Jesus' name. This we ask with faith and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's a privilege again to remind you to be ready because any moment from now, the trumpet can sound. Yes. But it's been our pleasure to empower, empower you, you to fulfill, fulfill your God-given God destiny. destiny. Amen.